What's going on, gardeners? It's Saturday, February 4th, and it is absolutely freezing here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, but spring will be here before we know it. On today's video, I'm going to share with you six different pieces of trash that you should never throw away and instead save for reuse in your garden. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications, and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom-designed apparel and other gear your support is greatly appreciated. Having a garden is about more than growing food. It's also about getting in touch with nature and really appreciating where your food comes from. And what I personally find is the more the earth gives me in terms of food, the more I want to give back and protect it. And one of the ways we can do that is by reusing things that we would normally throw away and turn that into something that can actually give us more food. And the first piece of trash that you should never throw away and always save for use in your garden are transplant trays and fruit tree containers. Always hold on to these because you will almost certainly use them later in the future. It's common for most new gardeners looking to start a vegetable garden to buy transplant and not to start from seed right off the bat, but even a lot of experienced gardeners will still go out and buy transplants. So if you're the type of person that likes to buy transplants and you think you're never going to start anything from seed, I'm here to tell you that's probably not true because if you want the best variety and you want to exploit the tens of thousands, if not millions of different varieties of different fruits and vegetables out there, you're going to have to buy seed and it's only a matter of time until you need transplant trays like these. Yes, it's true that you can buy transplant trays online and they're pretty inexpensive, but why purchase new pieces of plastic when you can just reuse ones that you already have? These transplant trays are old Bonnie transplant trays that I have from when I actually moved here to North Carolina about six years ago because I moved in the fall and I didn't have time to start new seeds, so I went out and I bought transplants. And believe it or not, these six-year-old trays I still use every year to this day, multiple times a year, and they still hold up just as well. The same thing goes with saving the containers for any trees that you buy. I have fruit trees planted all over the yard, and while some of them I bought bare root and didn't come with containers, many of them did. And I always hold on to these nursery pots because you never know when you're going to need them. You may think, well, I'm never going to start a fruit tree from seed or I'm not going to get into grafting. Trust me when I tell you, this lifestyle can become very addicting. I never thought I would have nearly the garden that I have today. And the other thing you can do with these is start container gardens. Container gardening is awesome because it allows us to get huge jump starts on the growing season by starting things indoors and carrying them out early and then bringing them back inside. So you can have a bigger garden that will last longer and extend your growing season by saving containers like these. That is one of the biggest no-brainers of all. Always save your old nursery pots and transplant containers. The second piece of trash that you should never throw away and keep for reuse in your garden are old milk jugs or water jugs. These make fantastic makeshift greenhouses when you cut the bottoms out. These old one gallon water jugs have been the perfect greenhouses for my cool crops that I've been growing throughout the winter. In fact, just last week I showed you a video where I took various cool crops and planted them out into my garden at the same time and some of them I left out in the open, the other ones I grew underneath the water jugs, and the ones underneath the jugs grew at three times the rate. And I'll make sure to link to that video above because the results were outstanding. The way they work is simple. They lock in additional warmth during the day and then they vent out the excess heat from the top. So it acts like you're an entire season ahead of where you actually are. Another thing that these milk jug greenhouses are great at is frost protection in case you get a late frost after you put your tender transplants out. And I put them to the test last year by planting out my tomatoes an entire month before my last frost date and I grew them underneath the milk jug greenhouses and they survived several hard freezes down into the mid-20s. And I'll make sure to link to that video above so you can see that as well. The results were incredible. The third piece of trash that you should never throw away and always repurpose in your garden are natural brown cardboard boxes. These are the brown cardboard boxes that don't have any weird colors printed on them and no stickers and things like that. I mean, really, how many of us have boxes delivered every single week to our houses? How many dozens, if not hundreds of these, do we dispose of every single year? Well, we can use these for two very specific purposes. The first thing that you can repurpose old cardboard as is a natural 
natural weed barrier or weed mat. And right here you can see this is the walkway into my garden and it's made out of cord brick. And every single year I would have weeds and grass germinating in the core holes of the brick and it was very annoying. So what I did a couple of months ago was I dug it out and I placed down several pieces of cardboard. And that's exactly what you see right here. This is an old broken down cardboard box. And you can clearly see I am 100% weed free. The weeds will even germinate here where I live in North Carolina in the winter. So that goes and it shows you how well this actually works. So all you have to do is just keep adding cardboard because this will eventually break down, but it will last several months, even in the summer. So all you really need to do is put a layer of cardboard down and either lock it into place with something like a brick or garden staples, and then wet it down really well. And once it absorbs the moisture, it will pretty much lock itself into place. So this has been a completely free weed mat for the entranceway into my garden. And I was able to use old trash and not have to buy any new material. And the second thing you can use old natural cardboard for is composting. If you're into making your own compost and you need a certain ratio of greens and browns, the greens being the nitrogen component and the browns being the carbon component, you probably know really well that it's pretty easy to find greens like coffee and kitchen scraps and grass clippings, but it's pretty hard to find browns unless it's deciduous tree season and all the leaves are falling off the tree and turning brown. Well, you can actually use natural cardboard board as your brown. The only downside is you will have to do a little bit of legwork. You will need to remove all of the old stickers because you can't really compost them. And you'll also probably want to put this through a paper shredder so it's shredded finely. That will work the best but you can use these and compost these and eventually turn them into food for your garden. The fourth piece of trash that you'll never want to throw away and hold on to for use in your garden are old paper egg cartons. You see these holes where the eggs used to sit? These are perfect for creating makeshift DIY transplant trays or seed starting trays. In fact, check this out right here. I filled out this tray, this egg carton, with a little bit of potting mix, and you can see just how perfect that fits in. And when you wet that down, that will be like your own little peat pellet or cocoa core pellet. And speaking about peat and cocoa core pellets, if you like using peat or core pellets, they also fit perfectly into one of these spots. So you can simply hydrate them into place and they can be your own little peat or core greenhouse. And what's pretty cool about this is it's also a measure of moisture regulation. Now, when we start our seedlings in plastic trays traditionally, the problem is they can dry out. And if, you, if your seedlings get pretty big, they can suck up all that water in there pretty quickly. And if your seedlings ever dry out in a plastic transplant tray, it could permanently damage or kill them. The nice thing about these is they will actually retain a bit of water every single time uh, you moisten them so that natural ability to maintain moisture actually reduces your chance of your seedlings drying out over time. The fifth piece of trash that you should never throw away and save for your garden are old fitted sheets. I'm not kidding when I tell you this old fitted sheet is probably about 10 years old and I use this sheet every single week of my life. In the winter, it is absolutely perfect for light frost protection. Now, last night we had lows that were supposed to be in the low 20s. So I had to break out my plant jackets and my incandescent lights to really keep my sensitive plants warm. However, if there is going to be just a light frost and I want just a little bit of frost protection and I don't want to take the time to put on the plant jackets, these fitted sheets are perfect because you can easily just throw them on top of a bush. So if you can imagine my Meyer lemon right under here, if I ever need to give it just light frost protection, I can just toss this right up on top. But that's not the only thing I use these fitted sheets for. I also use them to line my trunk anytime I have to go to the store to get bags of compost or mulch. This single queen size fitted sheet is enough to completely wrap up six two cubic foot bags of mulch in my trunk. So I'm able to just shove them in this fitted sheet, wrap it around them, and then when I pull them out, my trunk is completely debris free. And the sixth piece of trash that you should never throw away and repurpose in your garden are things like old worn pieces of stockings, leggings, and pantyhose. 
Now, I don't wear a whole lot of stockings, leggings, and pantyhose, but I have heard from very reliable sources that they are very prone to tearing. And when they do tear, rip, or develop those runners in them, they often get thrown away. Well, I'm here to tell you that they actually make the perfect plant ties for things like tomatoes, peppers, and other vegetables that benefit from staking because they're so stretchy. Fixed ties can become very problematic as plants grow because as the stems and vines grow and thicken up, they can wind up actually cutting into the plants, and that can be very damaging. Well, stretchy ties made out of those types of materials, they expand as the plants grow. Now, usually I use expandable vinyl tape, but that's just because I don't wear a whole lot of those items, if ever. Uh, never, <laughs> pretty much. So if I had them in stock, I would definitely repurpose them as a free source of ties instead of simply throwing them away. And that right there are six pieces of trash that you should never throw away and reuse them in your garden. Doing so will keep the landfills a little lighter and your wallet a little heavier. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in my garden in real life, they're all linked down below in my Amazon storefront. So click on that Amazon storefront in the video description and you'll see every everything I use in real life in my garden in general. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. We have this kennel back from when Dale was just an early rescue, knowing how to basically get around the house. And we don't really use it anymore, except he likes to run in there when there's things like fireworks and gunshots and really bad thunderstorms. It gives him comfort to run in there. So. I'm going to replace it with one of these furniture style kennels so it actually looks pretty decent in the house. And I wouldn't recommend something like this for anybody that keeps their dogs in here long term because they will eventually be able to break through this thing. It's not all that sturdy. It's really just for uh, very brief stays if like you're having Christmas dinner or something and you need to temporarily put your dog in there because they're harassing everybody for food like Dale loves to do or they want to run in there for comfort because there's a storm or fireworks or something. So I finally get to replace this thing. And there's Dale's new kennel. It looks like uh, it's big enough to hold him for sure. And it's certainly, oh, he's sitting down like a good boy. And it is certainly big enough for him. Uh, I will have this exact kennel linked in my Amazon storefront underneath the list, Dale's favorite things, in case anybody is looking for a large furniture style kennel that can fit a 60 plus pound dog. Dale can actually sit completely upright. I did not ask him to do this on cue. That is so good, buddy. You are such a good boy. Thank you so much. What a great demonstration.